Thank you very much for joining us. So today our seminar um, will be presented by Professor Tosin Mawomo, um, who is a senior lecturer in the School of Mathematics, Statistics and Computer Science at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Um, his research area is predominantly functional, uh, functional analysis, in particular Banach algebras. Um, he has successfully supervised over 15 masters and PhD students in Banach algebras and fixed point theory. And today he will be presenting a seminar entitled A Brief Su Survey on Convergence Analysis of Fixed Points Iterative Schemes with Applications to Nonlinear Problems. So, Prof, if you'd like to kick us off, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Delia. Sorry, I'm an associate professor, not natural in the School of Mass in UKZ. Thank you oh, very much. Oh, my apologies. Sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, morning, everyone. Uh, trust you are fine and coping well with the uh, with the lockdown. Uh, so this morning, I want to give uh, a talk with a title. A brief survey on conver uh, convergence analysis of fixed point iterative schemes with application to nonlinear nonlinear problem. Uh, I will start first by acknowledging uh, the invitation and the opportunity, and in particular the support from COE Mass seminar series. Eight of my PhD students are fully funded by COE Mass doctoral funding to date, of which five have completed their PhD in the last five, five years. Uh, three of them are about to complete, and uh, my current postdoc student is partially funded by COE Maths and uh, NRA postdoc funding. So this funding is greatly appreciated and uh, acknowledged. So the slide of my study, the outline of my presentation is as follows. So I will start by uh, with uh, the first session talking about iterative schemes. So why do we study iterative schemes? And what are the main numerical features of iterative schemes? So the second part, I'll talk about there are some important uh, fixed point iterative uh, schemes that I'm going to talk about. Some nonlinear operators are very useful in fixed point iterative schemes. These are basically the single value mapping and the multi value mapping. I'll just make a brief introduction of what these mapping are. Then I go to some notable fixed point iterative schemes. Uh, so most of the recent iterative schemes are multiplication of the these notable ones that I'll be talking about. Then I introduce some of the uh, optimization problem and other problem that we use fixed point approach to solve. In the last part, I talk about the recent development in this area of research and our contribution in the last five years. So uh, I've already acknowledged COE maths. So the abstract of this presentation is as follow. In this presentation, we just give a brief introduction to some notable fixed point iterative schemes and their convergence analysis in some important spaces, particularly Iba space, Banner space, uh, complete cat zero space, which we call the Adama space. In particular, we show how iterative scheme can produce approximate solution to certain classes of nonlinear problems, fit point problem for some nonlinear operators, and zeros of maximum of zero point of maximum monotone operators. So I go to the first session of this talk. So why iterative schemes? The reason I clearly stated on the screen, why did we study iterative scheme number one? They are almost everywhere in computational mathematics. They can produce approximate solution to certain classes of nonlinear and optimization problems. We can use iterative uh, uh, scheme to find the fixed point of certain nonlinear operators, which I'm going to show you in this talk. We can use fixed point theory to obtain the solution, basically approximate solution of constraint optimization problems. Design algorithm for signal and image processing. We can use it to find the zeros of complex polynomials and so on. So, what are the numerical features of a uh, iterative uh, scheme? Number one, they are they are, they are, number one is the compatibility, meaning that we can always find the convergence of those uh, iterative schemes. Uh, we can also imp implement it in the sense that we can write, use some software package like MATLAB to write some code and run it with concrete data and reach the uh, solution, the approximate solution that we want. Basically, most of the solution in fixed point theory are approximate solution. They are not exact. So another features of numerical features is the rate of convergence. So we can determine the speed or the error estimate of the activity scheme. And the third one is the stability. Uh, the second session is this is just to give some a big introduction to some of the uh, nonlinear maps 
that uh, we use in fixed point theory. These are basically divided into single value uh, map and the multi value map. So I've just spent a few minutes to just introduce some of this map, which is basically used in fixed point theory. Uh, the first one is single value operators or mapping. So X will be a nonlinear space, and we take a mapping from X to X. So this mapping is called ellipses. If you can get a constant greater than zero, such that we have our inequality 2.1. If that L is in the opening, uh, half, half close opening, our zero one, so that map is called a uh, contraction. And if it is the, is the if it uh, that L is in uh, the opening, our zero one, it's called a strict contraction. If L is equals to one, we call it a non-expansive mapping. Uh, so we have, uh, in this case, we have a Iba space, and we have a map T that is mapping the Iba space to itself. That mapping is called non-expansive if two point three is satisfied. Uh, is called the quotient expansive if f of t is not empty. The f of t there is the set of all fixed point set of t. That is the set of x in h such that t of s is equal to x. So s in h is called a fixed point of t if t of s is equal to x. So if the fixed point set is not empty uh, and uh, inequality 2.5 is satisfied, so that map is called the quotient expansive. It's family non expansive if you can get to point x and y in h so that 2.5 is satisfied. It's called not spring d. If we can get to point x and y in h such that we have uh, the inequality and the equivalent that we have below. So the map is called k strictly studio, contractive. If we can get k in that interval such that for every x, y you pick in h, 2.6 is satisfied. And the map thing is called k demi contractive. If the fixed point set is not empty, and you can get in that interval such that 2.7 is satisfied. Some of these maps are very important in phase point theory. And these are the maps in which you use to approximate the solution of a good number of uh, nonlinear non problem and optimization problem. Some uh, inclusion from what I've said so far is that the class of non expansive map is clearly contained in, in a class of uh, uh, the class of family non expansive mapping, is clearly contained in the class of non expansive mapping. And the class of non-expansive mapping is clearly contained in the class of quasi non-expansive mapping. And the class of quasi non-expansive mapping is clearly contained in the class of case treated pseudo contractive mapping. We have the other uh, inclusion. So still with single value mapping, so we have T to map a non-inner space, and to map a space, uh, Iba space H to itself. So T is called monotone if the relationship 2.6 is satisfied. It's called alpha strongly monotone. If you can get alpha greater than zero, such that 2.9 is satisfied. It's called beta inverse strongly monotone. If you can get a beta greater than zero, such that relation to inequality 2.10 is satisfied. And it's called Fermi uh, non expansive if uh, beta is equal to one for beta uh, strong, inverse strongly monotone. So we can easily see from the dimension that are given in that slide that uh, every beta inverse uh, 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 beta. Uh, inverse strongly monotone is monotone and one of our beta Lipschitz. So there are some other important operators that we use in phase point attractive scheme. One of them is called the metric projection operator. So in this case, we have a Hebrew space H. We have C to be a non-empty closed subset, subset of H. For every point, uh, so the metric projection is just a map that marks the bar space to C such that for every x to be in h, you can always get a unique nearest point in c, which I denote by pc of s, such that inequality 2.11 is satisfied. Now I give a useful characteristic of metric projection, which you also use in fixed point theory, and that is what I put in my uh, in, in, in inequality 2.12. Uh, so the metric projection is clearly a friendly non-expansive map. So another useful important operator that we use in phase point attractive scheme is what I call the Prosima operator. So the Prosima operator is defined, you have a mapping F, it's mapping H to the extended real line. So you extend the real line by, uh, from, the other, from the right hand side by positive infinity. So the map is proper, it's convex and over semi-continuous. So the Prosima operator of F with respect to that parameter gamma is defined as uh, uh, what we have on the slide. Uh, I've tried to put uh, what the admin F is all about. The admin, admin F is just the set of all minimizers of, of the mapping F. 
So the admin F is the set of S in the age, so that type of S is also equals to F of Y for every Y in age. So let's talk about the set of all the minimizers of that uh, of that function F. So I also give an, an, uh, an important, very useful property of the of the Proxima operator, which we use in phase multi scheme. All this will play a role as we go along in the study. So the another set of map we use in phase point theory are multi-value uh, multi operators, multi-value operators. So in this case, we have, uh, I want to define some of the maps we, uh, multi-value operators that we use in phase multi scheme. So we have a map in M that map our EBA space to the set of, uh, to the power set of X. 2 raised to the power h is the power set of s, which is the set of all subsets of h. So that map m is called monotone. If you pick s, y in h, you pick x to be an element in m of x, and v in m, uh, in m of y, so that the yeah, inequality 2.13 is satisfied. So the multi-value map in h that is monotone is said to be proper. If the graph of that map is not properly contained in the graph of any other monotone mapping, so I put a relationship there, which is also very important. Now, in this case, I just want to define what I call by CB of X. Let me define CB of X before I go back to the, pre to the, pre to the preceding slide. So I denote CB of X, we denote the family of all non empty closed binary subset of our EBA space. So throughout this study, CB of H will mean uh, the families of all non empty closed binary subset of H. So I define the metric that I call the uh, off dot metric on CB of H. The other maybe the off dot metric on CB of H is defined as uh, the maximum of the, the distance between the point in A to B and the distance between uh, uh, a point of uh, a point in B to A for all A, B in that space. So with this uh, idea, so I want to define what I call uh, uh, the kind of map we use in multi-value uh, in multi-value operators. So we have uh, mapping X that map H to CB of H. As I've said, CB of H is just the class, the family of all closed bounded subset of H. So this map S is called L If you can get it greater than zero, so the relationship is satisfied. If L is in the, that interval, we call it a uh, contractive. If L is equal to one, it's non expansive. In the fifth point set of X, the fifth point set of X in this case is the set of all X in the H such that X is in the set of S of X. If that fifth point set is not empty, and that relationship that follows old for every pin, the fifth point set of X, so that map is called quasi non-expansive mapping. So the next one we have when the map is demi and lambda demi contractive. So we have lambda in that interval, and the fifth point set is not empty, and that relationship are uh, old. So I've already defined what this is all about. So another important uh, operator that we use, multi-value operator that we use in phase multi scheme is uh, what I call the, the resolvent operator. This play a, a, a great role in our phase multi scheme as we go along the talk. So we have a map M that map H to the power set of H. So uh, it's, it's a multi-value map, it's a set value map and gets a lambda greater than zero. So the resolvent of M with respect to that, uh, to, to M, uh, to that parameter uh, uh, gamma, is the operator that I define as one over gamma, as the identity operator times gamma m, the inverse of it. So the another important one is what I call the UC the approximation of f, which is defined as follow, and the last one is the zero, uh, the set of zeros of m, which I've defined in the uh, the last line. So we also have this very important uh, useful property of the, the resolvent operator, which is very key in this part of scheme, so don't, don't let me waste a lot of time on this. Now, the next uh, session is all about some notable fixed point iterative scheme. So I want to just give some notable fixed point iterative schemes. Uh, most of the recent iterative schemes that we use in fixed point theory are just generalization or modification of this uh, of these notable ones that I'll be talking about. So the first one is what I call the Picard iterative process, which a good number of you may have been familiar with. So it's called the Picard iterative process. So the process we show in this case, we take X to be a metric space. So we have a starting point X1 in the metric space X. So the, the Picard iterative process is given by 3.1. It's given by, uh, by, 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 by 3.1. So now we have what to call the Banach contraction mapping principle. Banach says, uh, you can see the reference in, uh, in BA. So if that metric space is complete, complete in the sense that every Cauchy sequence you pick in it converges to a point in it, and that map is a contraction. 
then T will have a unique fixed point. Not only that, the Picard attracting process will converge to this unique fixed point of T. So that is a banner contraction mapping principle, which is which everybody, a good number of us will have, uh, we, we, we will definitely be familiar with. Eh? So the banner contraction mapping principle is pivot of metric fixed point theory. Uh, but for more general, uh, more, more general mappings than the contraction mapping, we can easily see that uh, the banner contraction mapping principle may not be applicable. So for example, I, I give an example with the banner uh, contraction mapping principle phase. So due to this, uh, there have been an improvement over the years to try to uh, modify or extend the one way or the other the Picard attractive process. So the another attractive, attractive process that I've talked about is called the Kraknoskeski uh, attractive process, which I do know by KIP. So what happened here is that in Picard attractive process, when you take the operator T as half into the entity plus T, when you take the uh, the the uh, the contraction mapping in Picard attractive process, you take it to be half into I plus T, where I is the identity, ma identity mapping on the banner space on the uh, on the metric space. Then you are going to have the attractive scheme attractive process 3.2. So attractive process 3.2 is just 3.1 by you replacing your T with half into I plus T. Now you can see clearly that. Uh, T and half into I plus T have the same set of fixed points. You can easily see that. So from that, it means that the limit of sequence 3.2 is the same thing as the fixed point of T. So let's take X to be a, a, a non-inner space in this sense and take T to be a non-expansive map. So the Kranoskeski uh, uh, attractive process is just in a generation of 3.2. It also generalizes the Picard attractive process. So what to do here is that Take the operator T in Picard attractive process, replace it by one minus lambda I plus lambda T. So we are going to get theory point theory. So theory point theory is called the KIP, uh, is the KIP. So in this case, we take X1, the starting point in the metric space, and the sequence is defined below. So basically, as I've said, you get the uh, KIP or uh, uh, KIP by taking your T in Picard attractive process with, by replacing it with one minus lambda I plus lambda T, where lambda is any positive constant. So another iterative scale that is very important in fixed point theory, iterative uh, 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 in fixed point theory is what I call the man iterative process. The man iterative process was introduced by man. The reference is, is in the my reference. So in this case, we have it to be at the bar space. So basically what we do is that if we take T in Picard attractive process and we denote and we replace it by Tn, giving us one minus alpha n i, i is an identity, identity map plus alpha n t, then we can see that the Picard attractive process 3.1 becomes the man attractive process 3.4, which is to take x1 in the reverse space, which is the starting point, and you define this n plus one to be one minus alpha x n plus alpha t of x n for n greater or equals to one. Then we have the man attitude process. Now you can see this say that the fixed point of t and the fixed point of t n is the same, whereby the sequence I, alpha n is coming from the open interval zero one. If we take the sequence alpha n in three point three to be the constant lambda, then the man attitude process reduces, reduces to the to the KIP. Now, one thing is that the man attitude process only give a weak convergence in general. It's not generally converge in a strong terms. So the convergence is weak. And that apart from that, uh, the man attitude process is only useful when the map T is continuous. So what happened the map T is not continuous? So due to this, we have uh, in 1974, Ishikawa also introduced another attitude process, which is called the Ishikawa attitude process. So the Shikawa's attitude process is used to approximate the pseudo, uh, the pseudo contractive mapping in a neighbor space. So the Shikawa attitude process is defined by 3.5. So you pick x1 in A to be the starting point. In the starting point, then you have xn plus 1 to be 1 minus alpha nxn plus alpha nt of ty of s, t of yn, where our t of 1 is given in the last line. Alpha and beta are sequenced in the opening of our 0, 1. So 3.5 is what we call the Shikawa iterative process. Now, if your beta n in 3.5 is just zero, 
then it should cover identity process reduces to the man identity process. You can see the connection between this identity process. It's just generalizing the existing one. So when you take a beta into be equal to zero in 3.5, then the initial identity process reduces to the man identity process. You can easily see that. So another important uh, useful identity process is what I call the, 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 the S identity process. The S identity process was introduced by Gawa and Tor in 2007. So in this case, we pick S1 in the basket bit at the starting point. So we define Xn plus 1 and also define in terms of Yn and you also define Yn, Yn in terms of Xn. Where the two uh, sequences are from beta are from the open interval 0, 1. So the remark there is that the S activity process is independent of man and Ishikawa and has a better convergence rate than Ishikawa and the man activity process. So the reference is clearly there. So uh, we need to know that in general, the picker that we put that have this, they are, that have introduced in theory point one, the man in theory point three, the Shikawa in theory point four, and the S attribute put in theory point five only converge weakly. None of them converge in a strong, uh, in, none of them have a strong convergence. So they only converge weakly. So however, we need to know that in an infinite dimensional space, strong convergence are more desirable and interesting than weak convergence. For this reason, and many, uh, many other, Appan introduced another attractive algorithm, attractive scheme, which converges strongly to a fixed point of a non-expansive map in the space. So this case, time around, instead of getting a weak convergence as you have in Man, in Ishikawa, and Co., so the attractive process of Appan converges strongly, which, which is more useful than those of Ishikawa and Co. So the Appan attractive process is given in 3.7. So we have, in this case, we have two starting points. We have U and XY, to be the two starting points in H, and the sequence is defined as Sn plus one equals to alpha n u plus one minus alpha nt of Sn, where the sequence alpha n is in the open interval, uh, close interval zero one. Uh, it's in the close interval zero one. So another important generation of the of the uh, upper iterative process is what I call the viscosity iterative process, and this one is given by uh, Zhu in Eber space. So you can see that there's a different, there's a connection between the upper and, and, and the viscosity attractive process. So the difference is that instead of you taking the U in 3.7, if you replace it with F of X and 3.8, you have the viscosity attractive process, where that F is a contractive, is a contractive mapping. So the viscosity attractive process also converges strongly, but the another important uh, uh, another usefulness of that viscosity activity process, why it's better than the upper is that the activity process converges to a unique solution of some relational equality problem that is associated with F, with, the, with, with that mapping F. So several authors have studied the above activity process and the modification to approximate fixed point of non-expansive, uh, fixed point of non-linear mapping and solution of certain optimization problem in Ebert, Banach, and other important uh, important spaces. So another important activity process is what I call the proximal point algorithm or activity process. So this is basically used to find an approximate solution to a minimization problem. Minimization problem is one of the important optimization problems that is being considered in uh, optimization theory. So what is this minimization problem all about? So you have uh, F mapping an Ebert space to R, that F is convex and that, uh, that F is convex. So a minimization problem is just you finding a point X star in H such that F of X star is less or equal to F of Y for every Y in H. So we know the solution of the minimization problem by admin F. So admin F is just the set of all the minimizers of that function F. So now the proximal point, uh, the proximal point algorithm or iterative process is used to approximate the solution of the minimization problem that are defined above. So this is defined as super case one in H, the Ebert space, and this n plus one is defined in 3.9, uh, where that f is proper, convex, and otherwise semi-continuous. So one of the disadvantages of the proximal point algorithm is that we only have uh, we only have a strong convergence of that. It doesn't converge weak, uh, strongly. Only, it only converge weakly to to the to, to, to minimize of f. And now Rockefeller some years back raised the following question: Does uh, does PPA converge strongly or not? 
So this question will stay around for a good number of years before uh, Gula, some years back, constructed the counter example to show that the Postman protagonist D does not necessarily converge strongly. So that it does not necessarily converge strongly. That means additional conditions are needed either on, on the, under the contractive map or the underlying space for the Postman protagonist to converge strongly. And we also have some other results uh, on, Prisma, uh, on the Prisma Post algorithm, trying to change the maps and they're trying to work, put some structure on the space in such a way that the Prisma Post algorithm will converge strongly. So uh, we have some different modification of Prisma Post algorithm for solving the minimization problem in Ibad, Banak, and Adama space in, in the literature. So I go to the, the, the next session of my talk. So this is basically nonlinear and optimization problem. So this is the key of this talk, nonlinear and optimization problem. So optimization problem includes uh, minimization problems that I've, that I've discussed earlier, relational inequality problem, which I'm going to talk about, inequality problem, monotone inclusion problem, among others. These are known to be very useful in diverse fields such as ecology, physics, economics, computer science, engineering, and many others, and many others. Since many of operator, uh, problems arising from this field can be modeled as uh, as uh, optimization problem. Now, one of the most successful and effective method for solving optimization problem is the fixed point method, is the fixed point approach. As a result of this, a lot of research efforts have been developed in the develop have been developed in developing different iterative points. What is algorithm? For approximating solution of optimization problem. So in general, when you are approximating the solution of optimization problem using fixed point approach, the question is what do we do? In general, finding a solution of optimization problem is equivalent to finding a fixed point of a suitable linear map. That is the key thing. That's the key thing of what we're doing in this area of research. So as I've said, I repeat myself again. In general, finding a solution. The solution we got here is an approximate solution. So finding an approximate solution of optimization problem is equivalent to finding a fixed point of a suitable nonlinear map. For example, for, for example, uh, earlier I discussed about the proximal point, uh, proximal point algorithm, which is used to find an approximate solution of the minimization problem. So a solution of optimization problem is just a fixed point of the resolvent of the convex function that is associated with the minimization problem. Also, the solution of a monotone inclusion problem is a fixed point of the resolvent of the monotone operator that is associated with the problem. So thus, this is the key thing. The key thing that we do in fixed point theory, uh, the metric fixed point theory is the third bullet, which is the fixed point method for solving optimization problem is concerned with developing different iterative algorithms for approximating the fixed point of resolvent of mappings associated with this problem. That's basically what we have been doing in the last five years, and that's basically what we do in fixed point theory. So I want to quickly introduce what some of this optimization problem is all about. So I want to introduce some of these optimization problems that uh, we solve in fixed point theory and that we apply fixed point uh, actually algorithm to. And one of them is what I call the variational inequality problem, VIP. So we have, uh, you can solve VIP in EBA space, in banner space, in metric space, and in uh, some generalized metric, for example, the Adama space. So in this case, your E can be a Hiba space, your E can be a metric space, E can E can be a complete metric space, or it can be a generalized metric space. So now the variational equality problem is defined. So you pick C to be a close convex subset of the space in which you are working with. So a variational equality problem is defined as you finding a point X star in C such that inequality 4.1 holds. That is what a variational equality problem is all about. Where A is mapping C to the dual space of E, it's a nonlinear operator. It can be a banner space, can be Hebert, can be an Adama space. Now, so with no solution set of VIP by VIP C A, now the four general theory for the existence, so it can be proved that the solution set of that problem 4.1 is non-empty. 
So the existence and the uniqueness of this solution was proved by Leons in 1967. Since then, several authors have introduced various adhesive methods for approximate solution of VIP 4.1. Another important problem in optimization theory is what I call the equilibrium problem. So as I've said, you can also find solve, define the equilibrium problem in banner space, in labor space, or some other generalized metric space. So in this case, uh, we have uh, equilibrium problem is defined as you getting a point X in C such that F of X comma Y is equal to zero for every Y in C, where that mapping F is mapping C cross C to R is called a bi function. So with the only solution set of equilibrium problem 4.2 by EPCF. So uh, Bloom and uh, Hotel in uh, some years back have established the existence of solutions of equilibrium problem. And since then, several authors have tried to develop iterative algorithm for approximating the solution of that equilibrium problem 4.2. So another important problem in optimization theory is what I call uh, the generalized misequilibrium problem. So this is just generalizing the equilibrium problem. So you can generalize the equilibrium problem in several ways. So one of the generalization is what I call the generalized missed equilibrium problem. So which you can also study in either Banach or Hibbert or some important uh, uh, generalized metric space. So we pick S in. So the problem, the generalized missed equilibrium problem is just to find the process in C such that inequality 4.3 is satisfied, where H is a nonlinear map and phi uh, is uh, taking C to the standard real line is a proper convex semi-continuous function. So if we take H to be equal to 0 in 4.3, then the generalized means equilibrium problem reduces to what I call the means equilibrium problem, which is defined as we find the point C in uh, X in C, so that 4.3, 4.4 is satisfied. So if you go further by taking your phi to be 0 in 4.3, uh, then the generalized means equilibrium problem reduces to what I call the generalized equilibrium problem which is for you to find the point S in C such that 4.5 oats. If you go further by taking H to be zero, the zero map and phi to be the zero map in 4.3, then we have the problem, and we have 4.5, 4. Uh, 4.3, reducing to what I call the equilibrium problem, which is 4.1 and uh, 4.2. Now, several additive methods for finding solution of this generalized equilibrium problem have also been introduced and studied by many authors in the recent time. Uh, the next one is what I call the fixed point problem. What is the fixed point problem? The fixed point problem is you finding a point X such that X is mapped to itself. So if you have uh, E to be a banner, to be a, a EBA space, you can do the same thing in banner space or any other space, yeah, metric space or some generalized metric space. So a point X in E is called a fixed point of that map, T mapping E to E, if T of X is equal to X. So, uh, that is a point, uh, a, a set of uh, points in which T map to itself. So that's the fixed point of that map. That is in the case in which your map is single value. But if your map is multiple value, if your, if your map is a multiple value or the set value, that is T is mapping into the set of power set of E. So the point X in E is called the fixed point of T if X is an element of the T of C. In this case, you know that T of S is going to be a subset of E. So throughout, we denote the set of fixed point set of T to be F of T. In general, the fixed point problem is just the is just a problem of finding the fixed point of a nonlinear map. In general, finding a solution of optimization problem is equivalent to solving fixed point problem. That is the connection. There's a connection between the fixed point problem and all the optimization problem that I have earlier introduced or discussed. And the connection between them is what I give in my last remark here. And I said in general. A solution of optimization problem is equivalent, finding the solution of an optimization problem is equivalent to solving the fixed point problem, that is, finding the fixed point of a suitable nonlinear non map. So, another important problem in optimization is what I call the split feasibility problem. The split feasibility problem. So, this was introduced by Sensor and FGID in, in 1994 precisely. So, in this case, you have two EBA spaces. H1 and H2, you have a nonlinear map that is mapping H1 to H2. You have two uh, closed convex subsets of H1 and H2 respectively. C is a closed convex subset of H1, and Q is a closed convex subset of H2. 
So the split fertility problem is a problem of finding a point x star in C such that A of x star is in Q. That's, a, that's what the split fertility problem is all about. So we must know that this problem has been studied extensively in the literature, and it's a power two for the treatment of wide range of inverse problem, such as uh, medic uh, uh, medical image reconstruction and intensity mod uh, modulated radiation therapy treatment. So all these problems have a lot of applications, and that's why we give attention in trying to get the fixed point of some of these uh, some of these maps. So I try to get some uh, useful relations between the variation and the quality problem the space feasibility problem and the fixed point problem. So these problems are somehow interconnected in some sense. So one of such interconnections is what I have in my next slide. So this talks about the relation between the variation equality problem, the space feasibility problem, and the fixed point problem. So uh, this is that if the fixed point, uh, if this split feasibility problem is consistent, consistent means that the fixed point, the, the solution set is not empty. So if you pick X1 in H, then you have the following equivalent. If X solve the split feasibility problem, then X now solve the following fixed point problem. So in this case, in two, X star is a fixed point of the map, which is the projection of I minus I A and lambda A inverse. A inverse is the adjunct of the adjunct of the operator A, I minus PQA. PQ and PC are just the metric projection of C and Q respectively. So uh, if X solves the space with this problem, then X solves this face point problem. If X solves this face point problem, if this problem, X also solves the variation and equality problem that is uh, that we have in theory. So that talks about the connection between the face point problem, the space with problem, and the and the and the variation and equality problem. Some other automation problem are also interrelated in, in this sense. Uh, so the next uh, class of problem we talk about, which also have a wide uh, range of application, is what I call the monotone inclusion problem. So in this case, you have a multi-value map. A is mapping nature to the power set of X. So uh, that map is monotone. I've, I've already defined that earlier, if that return is satisfied. So the monotone inclusion problem for Iba space is defined as you want to find X in the Iba space such that zero is the A of that X, where A is mapping it to the power set of phase is a monotone operator. So we denote the source, the solution set of monotone equation problem by A inverse of zero, which has been established to be close and convex. So the monotone equation problem is also known as the problem of finding the zeros of monotone operators. So it's defined as finding the zeros, it's the as finding the zeros of the monotone operator A. So the interest in monotone equation problems stem from the fact that Many optimization and related mathematical problems can be posed as monotone inclusion problems. So that's why the interest is. Uh, so what I will talk about in my last slide is uh, I've tried to introduce some of the notable fixed point iterative scheme. And the good number of iterative scheme that is being developed in the recent time, uh, one or two is just a uh, just modification of some of the old and existing fixed point iterative problem, we try to modify in such a way to have a better convergence and to make sure that instead of having strong uh, weak convergence, we get a strong convergence and, and we can easily, uh, uh, the axis problem is uh, easily applicable. So I want to talk about some of the recent results in this direction. In the recent time, several authors have studied the above iterative processes and their modification. That's the key thing. And their modification, it has been modified in several ways to approximate the fixed point of nonlinear maps and solutions of optimization problems in Ebert, in Banach, and other important spaces. So that's basically what we're doing there. So that summarizes what I've been doing in the recent years. So uh, as I've said earlier, solving optimization problem using the fixed point approach is equivalent to you finding a fixed point of an appropriate nonlinear map. And a lot of research is currently going on in this area. Uh, so this is an active area of research with numerous research articles in literature. And these articles are made mostly published in some of these uh, reputable international journals. Number one of such, a journal of fixed point and application. So that tells you the importance of this area of research. There are quite a number of journals that are specifically devoted to this area of research. I just list some of them here. And these are journals that specifically publish articles in this area of research. Number one of them is Journal of Fixed Point and Applications. 
uh, journal of uh, fixed point theory, uh, fixed point on application, uh, fixed point theory, fixed point on application optimization. Optimization is published by uh, Taylor and Francis in UK, Norica Gordon, Journal of Optimization Theory and Application. Most of these journals are Q1 journals, numerical function analysis and, and, and applications, Journal of Nonlinear Commerce Analysis, and so on. So, a good number of this uh, of this journal are uh, specialized journal. In this area of in this area of uh, in this area of research, they are such a nice journal in this uh, in this area of research. So I want to talk about my contribution in the last five years. Contribution in this area of fixed point theory and algorithm and application in the last five years. So my contribution is as is, is, is as follows in the next slide. My contribution in the last five years in this area, we have been able to publish over seventy articles with my graduate students and other international collaborators. In this area of research in the last five years, we have been able to produce five PhDs, and since MSc have completed their, uh, their, their, their study in this area of research in the last, between 2015 and uh, to date, nine PhDs and one MSc are currently working in this area of research. Basically, all of them are working in fixed material application, uh, of which three of them are ready to submit. Anytime from now, they will be completing their program. Uh, we also have a lot of, uh, some of the articles that have been published with uh, uh, with some of these graduate students in the last five years. Quite a number of articles have been published in, basically in this area in the last five years. Uh, some of them are listed on this slide. For example, we have the first one that is published, recently accepted in Journal of Optimization Theory and Application, which is a Q1 journal in the US, published by Taylor and Francis. Uh, we have uh, another one, which is Optimization. Optimization is a journal, it was accepted this year, and it will be published online. So this is a uh, optimization is a journal published by Taylor and Francis in the UK, and it's also a Q1 journal. So the third one is also a journal, it's an article in optimization published in 2020, published online in 2020. Uh, the next one, uh, the fourth one uh, is uh, also, uh, it's a Q2 journal, I started this year, it's already published online, published in numerical algorithm. Uh, so we have uh, the next one is uh, published in Journal of Computer Computational Applied Maths, published in 2020. Uh, we have the next one. This is published in a journal in Italy. That's uh, Redicotti. So we have uh, the next one, which is Bulletin Management Math Society, is published in 2019, and so on. So we have a quite number of work that are published that are uh, that are published uh, in the last uh, five years in this area of research, and some of them are just uh, displayed uh, online. So thank you for this thing. Thank you very much.